please. Okay. Great. Well, call to order the um, Tuesday, April 20th, 2021, Garrison Board of Education regular meeting. Um, begin with the roll call. Dusty, will you call the roll, please? Jocelyn Apicello. Here. David Gelber. Excused. James Hoke. Excused. Madeline Julian. Here. Courtney McCarthy. Here. Matthew Spicer. Here. Sarah Tormey. Here. Thank you. Next, we will move on to the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Okay. Next up, we have accept agenda, agenda changes. Does anyone have any proposed changes to this evening's agenda? Were there any changes last minute that I need to add, Dusty? Um, I think any changes that were made uh, came in a little bit earlier in the day. We did add the first reading of um, the policy on concussion management. I think I have that one already on there. And that's under new business in case anyone else hadn't uh, seen that yet. Um, and then we just uh, swapped out the wellness policy as the attachment on board docs with uh, with some updates, just a simple update there that we had missed, so. The policy committee will speak to that when we get to it. Um, okay, so any other changes from board members? Okay. Be it resolved that the Board of Education of the Garrison Union Free School District hereby accepts the agenda as presented. May I have a motion, please? So moved. Seconded. Thank you. Dusty, will you call the roll, please? Jocelyn Apicello. Aye. Madeline Julian. Aye. Courtney McCarthy. Aye. Matthew Spicer. Aye. Laura Tormey. Aye. Next up, we have President's remarks. I will be brief. Um, candidate, candidate petitions for the four open board seats um, were due yesterday at 5 p.m. I want to thank Dusty, um, our district clerk, for facilitating this process. Uh, we now have our candidates, um, Madeline Julian, Courtney McCarthy, Kent Schott, Ned Rausch, and David Gelber will be on the ballot in May. And I hope everyone comes out to vote. Um, I also had a brief note that we will be moving back to in-person meetings um, on May 5th for our board meeting. They will be done as we used to do them pre-COVID where they will be recorded and posted. Um, we will maintain social distancing, we will be masked and all of that. Um, and I know I've reached out to all the board members before this, but again, if you have concerns leading up to May 5th, please reach out to me directly. Um, and we will have them recorded and posted, right, Dusty? And we have the videographer on the for later. Um, so I look forward to seeing everybody in person. I think it will lead to some really productive meetings. Not that this isn't fun on Zoom too, but it'd be nice to see you all. Um, okay, that's all I have for President's remarks this evening. Carl? Thank you, Sarah. I just have a few um, brief comments. Uh, the first is, um, I guess good news about COVID, you know, the positivity rate in Putnam County has been steadily declining. As of yesterday, it was 3.7%. Um, also, 29% of our county residents are fully vaccinated. 43% uh, uh, have received their first dose. I've been sending out some links from the Department of Health. They've been running um, Moderna vaccination pods here in Garrison. I'll continue to do that for, uh, it's open to everyone 18 years of age and older. So we encourage you to take advantage of that. Um, on, on the concerning side, uh, the Department of, Department of Health has reported that they are seeing an uptick with teenage age children. Um, and they also think, um, you know, people are, are participating in sports and things are opening up, of course. We're feeling a bit more confident, but but I, we still need to be cautious. They they do believe some of this uptick is attributable to the UK variant or the B117 variant. So um, we need to be careful with our young people. Uh, most of you are aware that our middle school had to transition to a full remote model for this entire week. 
um, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, th uh, three consecutive days in a row. Uh, we did learn about uh, a positive case within our middle school, one at each grade level. Uh, with that, uh, it forced about over 50% of the middle school children to be quarantined for the week. And, and to be cautious, we, we thought it would be a wise decision just to go fully remote uh, until next week and bring the students back. Uh, and we think that was the safest uh, option. Uh, we, we don't take that decision lightly. Of course, we, we want our students in person, but I think it was the best uh, decision under the circumstances. I wanna thank the parents who have been participating in our testing uh, pods, our surveillance testing program run by nurse Melissa. Uh, we had a good number, I believe it was 23 or 24 last week. This week we had an additional eight parents uh, volunteer to bring their children uh, early before school hours. I encourage you to continue that. Uh, we have plenty of tests. It's a simple email or phone call to Nurse Melissa. You set up an appointment uh, and we welcome uh, parents bringing their children in. And I think it is, is a, a good uh, precautious, uh, pr precautionary measure to take. So uh, please continue uh, if you're able to. Uh, also, um, we have uh, Bionex, uh, the test, excuse me, is the Bionex rapid antigen test, just for those who may be curious. Um, next, state testing, uh, just report to the board and, and community that today all students in grades three through five uh, sat for their um, uh, state exam. Um, we recognize that, you know, the students uh, remote did miss uh, the exam, which was originally scheduled for today. They will be, our middle school students will be um, testing on Tuesday, April 27th. Uh, one section of eighth grade, which is 8B, will take the test on Wednesday, April 28th. And then we have one more day, <clears throat> April 29th, uh, for any makeups. Uh, we are just giving part one of the test. The state did give us an option. Um, they appealed to the U.S. Department of Education to um, not hold test testing this year uh, under the, the conditions of COVID, but um, U.S. Department of Education insisted. Uh, so we were able to modify it and just offer part one, which is what we're doing, um, trying to keep a, a, a environment that is not stressful for our students and comfortable. Uh, and I must say today, I, I think the students handled it really well, and we are pleased. And that's all I have for this evening, Sarah. Thank you. Do you have any questions from the board for Carl? Okay. Next up, we have board communications. Um, we have a presentation this evening on the coherence plan, the vision of the graduate presented by Jonathan Costa. Carl, could you promote uh, Mr. Costa? And I wanna thank, um, before we get started, everyone on the planning committee for being involved with this process throughout the year and getting us to where we are. He's a very cute dog. Yes. Good evening, everyone. How are you? Um, should I do the screen share, Carl, and just do it that way? Uh, Jonathan, I think Dusty is prepared to help you. You just have to give her a prompt okay. every time you move ahead. All right, let's go. I want to tell you all that I'm a six year Board of Education survivor. Um, I never had to participate in a board meeting on Zoom, but this is my third one tonight. So I do have experience with board Zoom meetings and I appreciate your patience and your service to your community. So that's who I am. And uh, the purpose tonight is to just to bring you up to speed on the process uh, through which uh, we built your vision of a graduate in Garrison. And uh, it serves as the foundation for uh, planning efforts to come. I know Jocelyn uh, bears the, the scars of this entire process and can speak uh, personally to it. Two other board members were involved as well. The only slide I had added that you won't see is I did have a list of the participants, but um, we uh, we basically, my, my purpose is to talk to you about the process that we used and the outcome of it and to entertain questions about how that happened and what, uh, what is to come. So uh, we started with the district's mission statement and uh, the, the key essential question for us was, 
given this mission, what exactly does it take to become self-motivated, self-motivated lifelong learners and contributed members of society? The essential question was, what are the skills and dispositions required to enable a student to fulfill that mission? And that really was the opening goal, essential question uh, that we use to frame our work. Okay, Dusty. And that was the framing question that uh, we used to, uh, to guide us. We then uh, began by doing a little background research. Go ahead, Dusty. Uh, I had provided the team and the team was uh, quite diverse. We had uh, teachers, administrators, parents, and board members. Uh, Carl, do we have a community, just a, um, a general community rep as well? Um, <clears throat> no, we, we were not able to, That's right. but we, That's right. we had a number of parents. Right. So uh, we first, uh, did, I provided the group with uh, literally like five pages worth of links to articles, research, uh, videos, think, uh, to prominent thinkers, exploring the notion of what the future will bring. We, we wanted this to be a depiction of skills and dispositions required for success in 2030, not 1980 or 2000. So we spent some time exploring resources that helped to expand our thinking about that. Um, I presented the group with some uh, thinking of my own uh, and just sort of engaged the group in trying to think broadly about what was going to be needed more so than what is needed right now. We also had a community-wide thought exchange, which I'm going to share the results of, where we uh, asked the community at large and the entire faculty uh, what they thought was going to be critical in terms of skills and dispositions for uh, the, the future of, of student success. And I provided a bunch of different research monographs for them to, uh, to look at, all of it directed toward trying to identify the three to six most important skills and dispositions that each, uh, each of them would think would be the most important, okay? Um, go ahead, you can flip through the, the, the animations. One more, thanks. Um, we spent some time before we engaged in the process itself of thinking through so we were clear on what the differences were between skills and dispositions, because um, sometimes they are used interchangeably and it doesn't matter that much when you're identifying them, but it matters a lot when you're trying to teach and assess for them. And so we sort of formed a common definition that we agreed to prior to launching the the identification effort. And if you look on the left, the skills really we think of as matters of cognitive and physical development. We have standards and clear expectations that they develop along a continuum. You can teach them directly. You can model them. You can assess and observe them and give kids feedback on how to get better. And most importantly, they are resistant to contextual impacts. And the best way to think about this if, is if a student went in to the pandemic, a good writer, no matter what happened to them during the pandemic, they are probably a good writer after the pandemic as well. Uh, skills, once you've developed them, they can atrophy and they can get rusty, but the, the, the bulk of them are still there and they can be regained and refined with practice. Dispositions, on the other hand, are matters of social and emotional development. They, uh, we can model them and give them examples. We, we can direct and instruct around them, but primarily we communicate them through modeling. Um, we ask students to reflect on them, give feedback on them, and focus on self-regulation and metacognition related to them. But unlike skills, dispositions are very vulnerable to contextual impacts. And 
the best, you know, a good example is resilience, for example. Um, a student may appear one day to be highly resilient to, um, to failure and work through things and do it cheerfully, but they may have had a crisis overnight or, or their family's in a difficult position or they didn't get breakfast and they come to school the next day and they, they quit and they, they, they give up. That doesn't mean they will always give up or they will always quit. It means that they're having a, a tough day. And the reason that this is important is that when it comes to assessing and judging and giving feedback, we need to treat the two things differently because they are different. Go ahead, Destiny, one more. And as an example of this, we shared with the team how on the skill side, you can develop cognitive rubrics, uh, analytic rubrics that actually give judgment on the development of a, of a skill along a continuum. Whereas in a disposition, you might model it, give the student examples, and then ask them to give you feedback on how they think they are doing. And we can talk about with them because it doesn't make any sense to score a kid on a task when they are so influenced by context and uh, in, in circumstance. So we started by really drawing a distinction between those two things. So when we brainstormed and selected the items that made up the portrait of a graduate, we separated skills from dispositions and did those two processes separately. Okay. Questions about that before we go any further? Okay. Um, on the thought exchange, we asked the community um, what they believe the most important skills and dispositions that would be required for future success. And as you can see, 128 people uh, participated in that exchange, which if you think about, especially during a pandemic, trying to get, well, you couldn't get people to come in and do it in person, so we did it virtually. Uh, 128 people participated. They shared 246 ideas and submitted over 4,000 ratings about what their opinions were. And we were quite happy that there was a very strong, you know, the majority of those comments came from parents. Uh, a lot of staff uh, participated and there was a small community contingent as well. Go ahead, Dusty. And of those 234 thoughts, when you lay out the hundred most important uh, via the, the uh, ranking process that Thought Exchange uses, and if you participate in it, you remember you can rank a thought from zero to five. And basically, all the thoughts that ranked four or higher, the top hundred, when you lay them out according to the frequency, you can see that the 25% of all the top rated thoughts related to critical thinking. Then we went to empathy, innovation, resilience, writing, communication, collaboration. Uh, I believe that was a compromise, working with others, sort of uh, you know, interacting with others in a thoughtful way, executive functioning, cultural literacy, problem solving, making arguments based on evidence, digital literacy, math literacy, and self-regulation. That was the, the feedback from the community. And we talked as a group for the, uh, through the length of the process that the community feedback was going to inform the group's decision, but it wasn't going to, um, to dictate it. We left it up to the committee to take this feedback, take the research, take the the, um, the dialogue that they had amongst each other and use that as the primary focus for determining what the outcome would be. Okay, Dusty. So uh, once we did all that, we brought everyone together virtually. Uh, we reviewed the background knowledge. I had them break up into small groups to uh, partner with one another to do a think pair share around what their individual preferences were. Go ahead, Dusty. And then based on that, we brainstormed a list of, of skills first, and then we repeated the process for dispositions. Once we brainstormed the suggestions, we clarified what they meant. We combined 
items that were duplicative. We allowed time for team members to advocate for things that they thought were important. And then we went through a virtual weighted voting process. Okay. And we did that by using uh, a NGT nominal group technique ranking. So they had a list of uh, skills to choose from, and they then entered those uh, skills on a grid in which they gave their most important a five, their fifth most important a one, and everything in between. So they got to pick from five of the entire list through a weighted choice voting. Okay. And this is the actual outcome. Uh, we did a Google sheet and you can see down the left-hand side, these were the raw brainstorm list of the most critical skills. You see the across the top are the participants and across the right-hand side, you see the vote totals. And the two yellow were the highest gaining votes. The two turquoise were the second tier. And that top tier function really represented the, uh, the weighted votes of the group in terms of the most important skills. Next. We did the same for dispositions. And along the left-hand side, you see the, the raw brainstormed combined list. And again, the, uh, the weighted voting and the two yellow, the highest tier, and the, tur the two turquoise, the second tier. Next. With those identified, we then set out to identify the next level of specificity. These would be indicators that would lead eventually to, that will uh, lead eventually to analytic rubrics on the skills domain and examples of preferred behaviors on the dispositions domain. And we did that virtually through a think pair share process. Okay. And that resulted in this first draft. And you'll notice if you think back to the two slides I showed you, there were eight draft skills and dispositions. And in the first iteration, based on the data collected for indicators of obtainment, there was a, a condensing of four of them to come up with a total of six. So the first draft was three skills and three dispositions. The titles of the skills were communication and expression, uh, critical and creative thinking, and foundational literacies. The dispositions were compassion, character, and empathy, growth mindset, and respect, equity, and inclusion. And the indicators underneath them were uh, vetted and aligned with those items. From here, this group really worked hard. Uh, when I say the first draft, this was this product came at the end of about eight hours of work to get from those brainstorm list down to this first draft. This group then met on four additional occasions to come back, rethink, redraft, uh, just really thoughtfully consider. And I, I I'm hard pressed to think of any. Uh, vision of the graduate team that I've worked with that really put as much effort in literally choosing every word carefully. And um, through all of those iterations, uh, they talked, they debated, they considered, they reflected, and finally came up with what is their final draft. Go ahead, Dusty. Uh, it begins with a uh, sort of a, an overriding statement that explains where it came from and what it means. So uh, the vision of the graduates comprised of skills and dispositions. It talks about why, how we define them. So people will understand what we mean when they read it. And uh, this is the sort of the framing statement. Go ahead, next. 
And then here are the final, uh, final skills. I'm going to make a statement about the graphic you see on the left. In addition to being very careful about the wording of the skills and dispositions, both the way they are titled, defined, and the indicators that follow, they were also very thoughtful about the graphic. And this is the third version, but the it's not the final version. Um, really, the graphic embellishment you see here on the left is literally the third version of it, but it, it's the least important uh, substantively. It may be the most important from a communication standpoint. So uh, you have all kinds of options for how to take these six things and put them together graphically. Uh, this is really just a placeholder of mine to help uh, graphically uh, communicate it, but the final is really up to you and not, um, not final at all. What is final are the words you see in front of you in terms of these three skills. So foundational literacies, meaning garrison students are fluent readers, interpreters, and sense makers within the multiple modalities in which they receive information. And that means they can discern main ideas in a variety of media, analyze, evaluate, and apply information in authentic context, apply mathematical and scientific principles in real world applications, read and write effectively. Communication expression, express written, verbal, and artistic communicators. They can organize and uh, they, or they have organization and logic of message, they have an understanding of audience and purpose. They have appropriate use of media, art, tools, and languages, and they can apply those in real world applications. In critical and creative thinking, Garrison students are critical thinkers who analyze, evaluate, and effectively solve problems. And that means they can analyze and evaluate data, source validity, ideas, problems, and situations, understand point of view, bias, and differentiate fact from opinion, construct arguments based on evidence, develop and pursue methods of inquiry, and demonstrate innovation, flexibility, and adaptability. Next. On the disposition side, curiosity and resilience. Garrison students explore curiosities, believe in their capacity to learn, understand why and when things don't work and persist to overcome challenges. Now, unlike the previous slide where those bullets will absolutely evolve into analytic rubrics for framing assessments, giving students feedback. These bullets are really meant to just be examples. And these lists can change and adapt over time. They may be different in kindergarten than they are in middle school. But essentially, what we're trying to do is communicate to the community the kinds of behaviors we see in students who are curious and resilient. You know, they explore and ask questions. They're willing to try new things. They see failure as an opportunity. They understand that learning is a process. They embrace challenges and remain positive. They're motivated to apply what they've learned and improve their community. There may be other ways in which they do them, but these are the ones that this group valued most. Integrity and empathy. You have a strong moral ethic, value, honesty, and make choices based on the best considerations of themselves, their environment, and others meaning they make intentional and thoughtful choices, they're honest and have strong moral principles, they value opinions of others, they help others on their own, they're reflective and responsible for their own actions, and they make contributions that project, uh, uh, protect and improve the environment. And finally, diversity, equity, and inclusion, Garrison students value themselves and others and are committed to equity improving the world around them. That means they advocate for self and others they show an appreciation of a diversity in, in identities and cultures. They work to ensure equity and inclusion, and they are true to themselves, both online and in person. Next. And uh, that's the framework. Um, and as I said to the group, uh, painting the portrait is easy, although sometimes in the midst of those debates and discussion, it didn't seem it, but coming up with these things is the easy part. Go ahead, the next. The hard part is actually living up to it as a school district and as a community. And um, what we're leaning into next, uh, starting in the fall, 
is a process to see how well aligned the various systems that undergird the work of the Garrison Public Schools are with creating learning environments that actually support the acquisition and development of those skills and dispositions. Next. And to do that, uh, what we're proposing to the board is a backwards design planning process where starting with that vision of the graduate, we look at what we want to happen in terms of alignment and coherence between the systems that support teaching and learning in the district. And then we compare that to what the district is doing already. And then the gap between those two things lead us to develop strategies to close those gaps so we can do what we need to do to ensure that every student leaves Garrison with the skills and dispositions they need to be successful in life learning and work beyond school. Next. And this is what that process looks like. You've already really started the first part. You're committing to those principles of coherence planning. You've developed those skills and dispositions and have committed to them. We then will organize ourselves into that into those data scan teams uh, to e examine the internal and external environment to determine the gaps between what is and what should be. And the result of that will be that, that gap analysis we will then focus on the two or two to four, five most important gaps between what is and what should be. And that will result in the strategic planning actions and uh, focus moving forward. Next. <laughs> That's it. So that was the process and the outcome. And uh, Jocelyn, was I true to the true to the cause and true to the story? Yes, and, and it wasn't traumatic to relive all of the <laughs> long meetings that we all had and uh, um, and James is now joined as well. He was oh, also, James is there. Yeah, he, he yes. When he came in late, but I'm, I'm sure he heard um, the tail end as well. We we really thank Thanks. you, Jonathan, for putting that together. Sure. Um, yeah, I'm I, here. I heard the whole thing. <laughs> good. No, um, it, I think it. I think it was a good process, and I think, like you said, you know, uh, scoping out the language uh, and framing the the. Uh, the skills and dispositions are is, is merely one step into an ongoing process of finding out how we're moving students from entrance into graduation and developing their skills and dispositions along the way. It's about aligning, and the, those steps are are uh, are a lot. Yep. Thank and you. It I, begins in the fall, so this isn't the end product. That's what people need to hear. Right. All right. Thank you so much, um, Jonathan, and for everyone on the committee and all the parents, uh, staff who participated. This does sound like quite a process. I'd like to open it up to questions for you, if you're willing, sure. Jonathan. Ask Absolutely. board members, do you have any questions? Courtney? Hi, Jonathan. Thank you so much Hi. for all of this. And it was a sure. great presentation. I'm curious, in the graphic for the thought exchange, I noticed that there was a line for students, but it was at zero. Um, were students asked to participate? Was it a choice to not have students uh, have their feedback? Um, how does that factor in? Yeah, I, I believe, uh, Carl, I thought we opened it up to middle school age uh, students. Um, it, it, it wasn't a conscious choice to, um, to exclude them, certainly. Uh, Courtney, uh, Jonathan is correct. Uh, you know, initially, um, I, to be honest with you, we, we just were not thinking um, about um, inviting the middle school students to participate. We did do a follow-up thought exchange where at that point we did include students. Um, the, the, the first thought exchange feedback was, was much stronger yeah. Um, the second one just invited feedback on our draft of uh, right. skills and dispositions. Right. I had to do it over again. Uh, we we would have invited the middle school students to participate. Yeah. Thank you. 
Can we include there that? May in the process? There, there may be opportunities. There may be opportunities for middle school participation in the planning process, though. Great. Madeline, it looked like you had a question as well. Yeah. That was my first question, but my second question. <laughs> um, um, with the mission statement now, does it mean that we should really go back and look at our mission statement after we finish this process? Because uh, my takeaway from the mission statement was that we is to be self-motivated and lifelong learners. So now would it change to more critical thinkers or is that something that was discussed during um, the planning stage? Uh, well, our charge was really focused on the portrait of the graduate. Uh, we could think about doing that as part of the planning process, but the way we had framed it was in order to become the, the thing that you see in the mission, the way it's described, is to have a student who can do these things, who possesses these skills and dispositions. And if they, can, if they have those, they are enabled then to be the person that is described in the mission. So I, I, I honestly think from an organizational standpoint, it's, it's a coin flip. I think you could frame it so that the mission still works and you just move on from the portrait of the graduate you think about your definition of learning. What's this, what does it mean to truly challenge and engage students in the classroom? And based on that foundation, you can do a, an effective plan. You could also choose to rethink the mission first. I don't think it would add a lot to it. I think, you know, in my opinion, helping every child to be successful in life, learning, and work beyond school, it's 11 words. It would work in any public school. It's what does that mean? What does it look like and, and how do you get there? So you could do it, but I don't think you have to, to be successful. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, I actually had a question. Um, I think this is more directed to Carl. Um, I'm very excited about the next steps of you, the how do we get there part, because um, these do sound like great, a great vision for our graduates. So uh, Carl, I was wondering if you could speak to how this process has, you know, impacted the current environment and climate in the district, um, and also how it impacted the budget process for next year. So are we able to really take what we've learned so far and start with new initiatives, even as we continue the next steps? Thank you for that question, Sarah. Uh, the, the answer is yes, it, it definitely influenced our thinking uh, with this year's budget. Um, we we are looking forward to the next phases of this process with Jonathan. Uh, we're off to such a strong start and we look forward to really developing the, those specific plans in the fall. Uh, but the consensus was that we, we, we didn't wanna wait. And it's not that we're impatient, but uh, we're very excited. And, and, and there were things that, uh, opportunities that were pretty obvious to us right at this point. Uh, just to, to name a few is um, our Yale Ruler Program that is moving forward. It's our SEL program uh, that fits in perfectly with with the skills and, and dispositions. Um, our DBT program, dialectical behavior therapy, which is part of the budget. Um, also our anti-racism and equity uh, strategic plan, uh, doing a curriculum audit, for example, which is uh, one of our um, objectives for next year. Uh, that fits in uh, just perfectly, uh, our guidance program. And one big one is, is uh, the district is hiring uh, an environmental educator. If the, this budget is approved, uh, we, that is included. Um, and we, our goal is a K-8 environmental program um, that really is aligned. There's some good work happening um, here at Garrison and there has been for, for, for a long time, uh, but we wanna see an alignment K through eight and a continuum of environmental education at, at every grade level. And we think with this new position, uh, we really will be able to attain that. So those are just some examples of, of how we're already moving forward um, with what we believe are the, the obvious opportunities uh, that we have in front of us. And in terms, sorry for the dog in the background, but in terms of the uh, culture in the school, is there excitement to embrace these new, um, 
behavior, the, the parts of the program, um, the division from the staff? Um, I, I, I would say absolutely yes. Um, we, we've done a number of, we, we've been bringing, by the way, every step of the way, uh, we, we have been sharing uh, with staff um, with, with all of our initiatives. So, um, and, and again, you have on this committee, it's a 14 member committee, uh, we had a number of uh, teachers. Of course, we had our school principal and myself, our board members and parents. Uh, but teachers have been a part of every committee. And, and I think there is a tremendous amount of buy-in and excitement uh, around these programs from, from our faculty. So uh, the answer is yes. Great. You know, I, I've, I've been the wet blanket in terms of, uh, you know, I, I know the heaviness of the lift of the data scan portion of the planning process. And based on the pandemic, I just had to push Carl to try to wait to the fall to do that because the last year has taken a toll on folks and to layer that effort on top of just getting through the rest of this year, I didn't think your final plan would have the, the same opportunity for success if we did the, get the, the portrait graduate first did some of the low hanging fruit obvious things that showed that there was a commitment to it and then do the deeper dive in the fall when people have a chance to sort of regenerate and return to a more, a more normal school year. So I think you've done the right thing by getting started and getting that focus, showing the commitment by making the changes that Carl just described. And then you can go deep at the systems level uh, in the fall to really then accelerate it past then. Thank you. Do you have any other questions from any of the other board members? Thoughts, comments, feelings on dispositions? Um, all right. Um, I will say a note on the timing wise before you go, Jonathan, that um, having the summer, I believe we've spoken about this before, will allow the planning committee to Madeline's point to take another look at the mission statement as well with these things sure. in mind. Yeah. So um, I think the timing, does work out well for us. And I appreciate right. your thoughtfulness. Sure, my pleasure. All right. Have a good night, Have a good Thank night you everyone. Thank so for joining us on Zoom. Yep, bye. Thank you, Jonathan. Okay, great presentation. We are on to our next, which is the presentation of the proposed 2021-2022 school budget. Um, I think at this point in the process, because we have seen this budget presentation many times, if the other board members are okay with it, I would like to ask Joe and Carl to just review the new information so that we don't need to go through the whole presentation again. If anyone objects, let me know now. Okay. All yes. right. I think we can just go through the, no, the new information now, Joe and Carl. So Sarah, I'll just frame it and I'll turn it over to Joe. Um, thank you. We did include some past slides, so um, they'll, they'll be posted for people to refer to. And of course, the past presentations are also there for people to watch uh, if they'd like to. Uh, but what we're focusing on this evening is um, we received some additional funding. You may recall that we were scheduled to adopt the budget last board meeting. We did recommend postponing it so we could understand more about uh, the, the New York state funds and the federal funds that we are receiving. Uh, they come into in two categories, basically the ESSA funds, which stands for Elementary and Secondary Emergency Relief Fund, and then also the American Rescue Plan that you've heard a lot about um, at the federal level. So there have been a number of meetings kind of unpacking uh, these uh, this funding and, and helping us to understand uh, how we could spend this money because there are some restrictions. Uh, Joe has done a tremendous amount of research and I thank him for that. And uh, with that, I'll turn it over to Joe and he will explain um, the different categories and our recommendations to the board this evening. Sure. Dusty, if you wanna just go to the slide that starts with the federal aid. So, as Carl mentioned, there's two um, aid categories that were new new to the district this year, um, and it's the ESSER and the American Rescue Plan. And primarily, 
what the guidance that we have is that these things that we're supposed to use these grant monies for are for things that are um, one, one time sort of expenses and things that have to do with uh, um, the pandemic and learning loss and enrichment. So our allocation of the ESSER funds is 103,000. That is, is a grant where we will anticipate getting some information from the state probably by the end of the month on what the application process will that will be. And, and then there's also the American Rescue Plan, which is 235,000. That is a three or four year grant. It's not, it's not completely determined because the New York State timeline and the federal timeline is a, a little bit different. And they are considered grants in aid, which means that um, they are not part of the budget. They are, they are a part of a grant application that the district will apply for. And it, is, uh, it, doesn't, um, it doesn't, isn't affected by the budget adoption or the approval from the public. It, it is completely separate. Next slide. So we don't know exactly what we're going to use these funds for, but we do have some ideas. Um, we are incurring some additional expenses for, for cleaning because of the enhanced cleaning because of the pandemic. So we have proposed um, using some of the funds for that. Some of the funds for the core switch upgrade. This is a um, upgrade for all of the computer and technology equipment as well as the upcoming phone system all has to be connected to the network with a device which is called the core switch. The existing one is beyond its useful life. And it's something that we don't um, purchase very often. The last time we uh, purchased one was maybe seven years ago. So that is, is on the list for um, possible use for the funds addressing learning loss. And then we also have a, uh, a plow truck that is 15 years old. So these are ideas. Um, if we wanna go on to the next slide. So there's a grant application. It's not completely finished yet. Um, but what we will have to do is we will have to involve a, a bunch of stakeholders that um, represent a cross section of, of the district and then there will be a hearing and then it needs to be posted to the website by Ju July 1st. But all these things are being developed at the state right now. And we don't um, know exactly what, what is, how that's gonna transpire, but they think that they're gonna have um, an application and a framework for it by the end of this month. Next. The, the tax cap calculations are basically the same. So we can go on to the next slide and it's 2.46% for the district. Next. So see, these are some of the adjustments that we made between the last presentation and the current one. So we um, allocated some expenses to the federal grant like the cleaning, the core switch, some of the professional development um, and then we, we made some adjustments to uh, the health insurance budget and also to the high school tuition budget. So we made some increases there. Next. So the budget is, uh, is slightly um, different from the, from the last time. It's 11,692, which is 2.83% uh, um, increase over the prior year. And as to the revenue, um, we are able to reduce the amount of fund balance based upon the increased revenue from, from New York State. Um, we was over 900,000, now it's uh, 893,000 for next year. And then the state aid number, while you see a, um, a sort of a large increase there, the majority of that increase is due to the BOCES aid um, and the BOCES aid is an expense-based aid, 
which means that it is based upon the actual expenditures that we have through the BOCES this year. And because we have a significant increase in the BOCES expenditures this year due to the iTutor expenses, we, we expect that next year as aid. Next slide. So these are the, uh, the only assumptions that are left that the BOCES aid from iTutor will come in 21, 22 and that refund of prior year's expenses are going to match the, the estimates that we've developed based upon the forecasts that we have. Next. The uh, tuition, um, we, we've talked about that at the, last, uh, at the last meeting, so I don't think we need to spend a, a lot of time here, but Haldane is moving towards the non-resident tuition model and away from the model that was based on the contract that they had with the district. So we did make some adjustments and it increased the uh, tuition budget slightly. And so then that, that uh, gives us a little bit more space in um, next year for unanticipated students. Next slide. So it allows for one um, high needs student four um, high school students that are unanticipated it was originally two, but any um, additional needs beyond those five placeholders would, um, isn't included in the budget. So we're trying to, we're trying to budget this as, as close to actual as we can, but still allow for some students that are unanticipated to occur. Um, the only uh, change that, that is on, on this slide is the high school uh, tuition um, change, 77,000. Next slide. And these are the same. Next. Next slide. We, so we made a sl slight adjustment here to the estimates for fund balance due to the um, change in the appropriated fund balance for next year of 893,000. Next. The, this is uh, unchanged. Next slide. So this is the only thing left that we, we don't know for certain. Um, we are planning to have the same precautions that we have for next year for budgeting purposes, but we don't know if we're gonna to have to do everything that, that we're doing now, but we're planning for it. So there's a public hearing on May 5th, where the budget will be presented in, in detail, including the uh, three components and the contingency budget information. And we have a vote on the 18th. Want to remind everybody to come out and vote. Are there any questions? Uh, Madeline? Thank you, Joe. I was really trying to follow. So here it goes. Um, the the um, federal stimu stimulus, we may be getting over $100,000, and that's with aside from the grant that needs to needs to be sent over. So um, I was trying to just look at the bottom line of the previous budget versus this one. It looks like it's pretty much the same bottom line. We, we are at $11.7 million. Cool. It's, it's close. Um, so we did get some, some more revenue, which offset the, um, the increases that we put into the budget to make it, um, it, it more able to withstand um, additions and, and changes. Okay, so, and then the fund balance, um, how did you come up of um, how to deal with the fund balance? Because not a lot came out of the fund balance. Yes, so there is, um, there is, some needed fund balance as far as uh, next year. Um, one of the things that that is really important to to take into account is 
there was a lot of news uh, regarding the additional aid to districts. And um, districts that, that had higher needs saw much larger increases in aid. So if you look at the actual aid for, um, and you look at the actual aid runs for, for Garrison, the dif difference year over year uh, for the things that are not included in grants, okay? So the, this is not including the, uh, the ESSER or the American Rescue Plan. The change year over year is only an increase of $17,000. So there's not a big change in, in aid because um, the district was held to a foundation aid increase of only 3% because it's, you know, the district is not considered a high need. So um, that was... Um, that was the second to lowest amount of uh, foundation aid increase, which is, foundation aid is the largest component of our aid at, at 550,000. So um, districts that were, are considered um, suburban or urban that were low needs were capped at 2%. Um, Garrison is considered rural. And so it, the aid increase was capped at 3%. But um, districts, neighboring districts that have higher needs than, than Garrison saw large increases in foundation aid, but um, Garrison did not. So that's why the, the, the budgets didn't change sig significantly between the, the prior budget and this one. What, what did change is the um, some of the items that we were able to move to the grants allowed us to, to uh, build uh, some items back into the budget that will um, make the, the budget more resilient for things that may happen. Thank you. I have one last question, if that's okay, Sarah. Of course. Thank you, Joe. I think that's, that's it was a tight budget, so it's good to see um, extra um, students for um, um, special uh, education there also. Um, my last question is the capital project is uh, it's on a tight on a tight budget and every penny counts. So I did see that there's a probability of using forty thousand dollars for the switch upgrade and maybe some of the phones. Can that scope be reduced from the capital project because we will need, all of the contingency and anything else to to address the delta. Uh, well, the the core switch was not um, was not part of the of the capital project. It was something that we were building into the budget because it was beyond its useful life. Um, what I will say is, I think we're we are doing everything that we can we can do as far as being able to. Um, reduce the, uh, the cost of the, of the capital project. I don't know necessarily that there's anything that, that we can add to, to, to this budget that we're recommending that you adopt tonight, but this, this capital project is going to go into, um, into the following year. And I think that there may be some op opportunities to build some items into the, the next budget that we develop that you know, if there are items in the um, alternates that we do not not award. And what I will also say is, um, so we we have um, the documents, the construction documents are out for the for the public um, for them to 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 review and to um, to place a bid. We also put a uh, notice up on. Uh, Empire State bid system um, that you know went uh, sent out notices to over 600 um, contractors. Um, I did field uh, a number of calls as well as uh, made it, made contacts to contractors that I've worked with on previous projects that were successful at other school districts. And um, we have our walkthrough tomorrow afternoon, and I'm hoping to see a big crowd. And if we do get a, a, a big crowd, um, I, I think we're, we're gonna have good bids in, in May. That's great news. 
Uh, Jason, you had a question as well. Uh, yeah, just quickly, um, thinking about those um, the federal stimulus funds that are kind of like grants. So those proposed uses, um, I'm just trying to clarify those are just proposed, but they're really going to require a lot of um, stakeholders to come in and help to create the ideas. These are just some good ideas that have allowed us to kind of make a better and a tighter budget, um, but they're not set in stone. They're just kind of recommendations at this point. Yes, that's correct. I think that um, that we really need to um, carefully examine both the criteria when it's finalized by the state, as well as right. the needs of the, of the district to come up with, with the right choices. Um, we, we understand that the, that the, the general framework is, um, is to address learning loss, things like summer or after school enrichment, and um, things that are non-recurring expenses. Those are kind of, and, and also things that are related to, to um, pandemic mitigation activities. So things that we think are going to, um, to go away. And that's why it was, it, was, um, it was done as a grant and aid because they didn't want um, districts to build budgets using this uh, funding from, from the federal government that will disappear. So that's that's why it um, it is not included as a part of the regular budget. It's not included as a part of the regular aid that uh, that districts get every year. It's a grant that we have to apply for based upon the criteria that the federal government and the um, the state sets. Is that okay? Great, thank you, Joe. Um, and I will say some of those are very broad, like. The seventeen thousand or twenty-seven thousand for learning loss is very broad. So we have a yeah, lot of women that's there. that's uh, you know that's a, a placeholder in in the amount of time that that we had to to kind of talk about about this. Um, you know, we had a uh, the New York State Association of Business Officials had a conference call where they're given the, a breakdown, which I attended, and also the uh, school boards association, and it's just basically being hashed out um, as we speak, how this is gonna work. So it, it you know, we had to uh, um, come up with ideas that, that we think meet the, meet the, uh, the criteria as a, as a jumping off point to um, develop our discussions. Thank you. Do I have other questions from board members? Okay, this looks like it's, it for the budget. Thank you, Joe. Thank you, Carl. Um, it looks like we are now moving on to, after many months, the adoption of the proposed 2021-2022 school budget and property tax report card. I'm going to read the recommended action first. Be it resolved that the Board of Education of the Garrison Union Free School District hereby adopts a budget of 11692000 487 for school district purposes for the school year commencing July 1, 2021 through June 30th, 2022 to be presented for voter consideration at the annual meeting of, of May 18th, 2021 and the 2021-2022 property tax report card as presented. May I have a motion please? So moved. I think Madeline seconded. Second. Okay. okay. Um, Dusty, will you call the roll, please, for the vote? Jocelyn Episello. Aye. James Hoke. Aye. Madeline Julian. Aye. Courtney McCarthy. Aye. Matthew Spicer. Aye. Sarah Tormey. All right, thank you everyone. We have a budget going out for voter approval. Thank you, Joe, for all of your work, um, especially coming in as late as you did to this process. It's greatly appreciated. Thank you to your team. And thank you, Carl. All right, next we go on to the BOCES budget vote and board elections. 
Uh, whereas the Board of Cooperative Educational Services of Putnam Northern Westchester County, there and after BOCES, has proposed its tentative administrative budget for the 2021-2022 school year, July 1, 2021 through June 30th, 2022. Now, therefore be it resolved that the BOCES tentative administrative budget for the 2021-2022 school year in the amount of $9,866,988 be and hereby is approved by the Garrison Board of Education and be it further resolved that the Board of Education of the Garrison Union Free School District casts its vote for the following candidates. Catherine Lilburn, um, our one, a local Garrison resident and Michael Simpkins, a Peekskill resident. The term would be July, let me know if I need to read the addresses, Dusty. July 1st, 2021 through June 30th, 2024 um, for both candidates. May I have a motion, please? I move. Second. Thank you. Do you have, does anyone have any questions or comments or thoughts on this prior to the vote? Okay. Dusty, will you call the roll, please? Jocelyn Apicello. You muted. Aye. James Hoke. Aye. Madeline Julian. Aye. Courtney McCarthy. Aye. Matthew Spicer. Aye. Your Tommy. Aye. Before we move on, I want to say congratulations to Catherine Lilburn, our local resident, and thank her for her willingness to continue to serve. And also thank Michael Simpkins, who has a long and successful tenure on the Peekskill Board of Education for his willingness to serve in this capacity as well. All right, next we move on to discuss and approve the 2021-2022 Board of Education meeting schedule. I'm going to read the recommended action, then we can discuss. Be it resolved that the Board of Education of the Garrison Union Free School District hereby approves the Board of Education meeting schedule for the 2021-2022 school year as presented. May I have a motion, please? I moved. Seconded. Okay. Um, do we have any questions, comments, thoughts on this before we approve it, James? I don't think there's enough meetings. <laughs> I really think you guys need to start meeting a little bit more. I, I mean, the same thought, James. Um, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> I think we can always add, because as everyone knows, any school board member can call a meeting with 24 hours notice, even if you just want to leave the house. Um, now so then stepping down, I really think that you guys should be meeting a lot more. That's my feeling. <laughs> I will note, so we currently have, um, Dusty, I don't know if you wanted to screen share the calendar or if everyone's read it, but um, this represents, what did we end up with retreat days? Uh, July 17th as a Saturday retreat. That will not be the date of our um, equity retreat because we are trying to do that with Haldane and I'm trying to coordinate the schedules currently. Um, but that is looking like that will happen at some point in September. And I've given everyone those two September Saturday dates. We're just waiting for confirmation from um, April Francis that she is available on one of those dates. Um, all right. You all can see that. Okay. Yeah, yes. So we do have a board retreat date that is to be determined. Um, they're all listed there. So we'll have to figure that out as we get closer, um, but please save some Saturdays, perhaps the July 17th and then one in September. All right. Thank you, Dusty. I think we're able to move to, unless anyone has questions, comments, thoughts beyond James's, we'll move to a, a roll call vote, please. Jocelyn Apicello. Aye. James Hoke? Aye. Madeline Julian? Aye. Actually, let me, can I abstain? Can I reverse my vote? Sorry. I think I should okay. abstain. Thank you, James. I'm sorry. Courtney, uh, did I get Madeline? I'm sorry. Yes, I. Thank you. Courtney McCarthy? 
Aye. Matthew Spicer? Aye. Sarah Tormey? Aye. Okay, next up we have committee reports. I'm gonna begin with the audit committee. The audit committee met with, and I'm the chair of that, so I'll start with that. The, um, we met with our internal auditor uh, this past week. Um, and we had our community member present as well as Joe and Carl, and thank them for their time. Um, the internal auditor gave us his report. It will be presented to the full board. They're making a few little changes. And then um, Joe will do a corrective action report um, that will also be presented to the board with the report. Um, I will say he did an in-depth look at purchasing um, and payroll for the past year, which was uh, the 2019-2020 year. Um, and personally, I was very pleased to hear that many of the um, issues um, that he drew our attention to have already been resolved with the new team in place. Um, a lot of this came down to process procedure and of course our favorite thing, policy. Um, any of the other members wanna jump in and share their thoughts on the uh, internal audit presentation? Uh, Jocelyn, was, Jocelyn and Matt are also on that committee. Okay, so as soon as that report is finalized, I will send it out to the full board for review. Uh, next up, Matt, the facilities committee. Hi, everybody. Uh, we had a great meeting with uh, Tetra Tech and Cal G Construction. Um, I want to thank Madeline in particular for her expertise, uh, which has been invaluable. Um, we it, everything's out to bid. Uh, so we discussed all the alternates um, building on the public meeting we had last week. Uh, we talked about lots of detailed things, everything from flighting, flighting, sorry, I just combined lighting and flooring. Um, and now we'll be getting more information now that everything's out to bid, but it was a good, a good meeting. So thank you. Thank you, Matt. I don't know, uh, I don't know if Madeline wants to add anything to that. If I, if I, left anything I, I, I want to thank you, Matt, for all of the work and Joe and, and Carl, there's been a lot of back and forth in the last day, um, last week on this. Um, and one, one thing that I did want to ask, um, maybe Joe and Carl is for the bidding, was it advertised locally? Is there, um, a place that maybe local contractors, um, can see the bid advertisement because the more interest we get, the more competitive um, bids and fees we receive. Yes, so it is on the the notice is on our on the front page of our our website, as well as it was in uh, our our two official papers, and um, it is it is advertised in a. Um, on a in a in several clearing houses as far as um, uh, places where bidders typically typically look, and um, when I looked at the list of the 600 or so um, uh, companies that got um, that got the automatic notification, I saw a lot of familiar names to me in both mechanical, electrical. And general contractors, I, I've seen a lot of names that that I know do um, excellent schoolwork. So I think um, I think uh, we're we're doing doing the best there. We also reached out to some contractors that have done some district uh, done some work in the districts. Some are are one of our mechanical um, contractors that does a lot of repairs, and we. Um, we called them and um, gave them uh, the, the information, the opportunity. They are um, not able to, to bid, they told us, um, because of other commitments that they have. They didn't think that they could, they could do it, but they appreciated uh, that we reached out to them. And we also reached out to a um, contractor that has done some abatement for the district in the past that we thought was, was competitive. So we're, we are... Um, uh, beating the bushes to try to find um, people on this project. And, and I think um, I'll be able to give a little bit more of an update when I, when I know how many people attend tomorrow. I'm, I'm hoping to see 
a lot of uh, a lot of people tomorrow um, tomorrow afternoon at, at uh, three thirty. Thank you. Thanks. We're in great hands with you and Carl. All right. Thank you, Matt and Madeline um, and Joe and Carl for the facilities update. I know you guys have been putting in a lot of time and I'm, um, we're all very appreciative. Um, next up, we have policy. Courtney. Hello. Uh, policy committee met today. Uh, to go over some changes, um, some of the policies that are on the uh, agenda um, later this evening. The uh, one that um, Sarah mentioned earlier, uh, the concussion management uh, treatment plan uh, policy was one that, uh, given the fact that modified sports are beginning next week, uh, we felt it was really important to um, push that ahead and waive the second reading so that we can adopt it tonight so that it can go up onto the website um, uh, just in time for all those exciting spring sports to start. Uh, we've also got second reading of the wellness policy um, later this evening. There is very a few minor changes that we had discussed um, in our last meeting two weeks ago. Um, we went over those changes today and that's noted in the agenda. Um, we got a great uh, update on code of conduct from um, Allison Emig. And that will be, she is really hard at work going through um, all of the details of code of conduct of both of our past policy, looking at other schools. Uh, so we look forward to getting that draft in a couple of weeks. And uh, we also did some more work on our equity, diversity and inclusion policy um, based on some uh, suggested changes from our legal team. We reviewed all that. It's going back to the lawyers and I believe it'll be, we'll be having a first reading on that on, on the, at the next meeting in two weeks. Did I miss anything? No, but I do think the equity policy, Dusty, correct me if I'm wrong, I think we did the first reading. So the next one can be our second, even though we've made changes. Got it, you're right. But we didn't want to drop it in for today because there were, we spent a lot of time uh, wordsmithing it today. Okay. So you. I think that's right. <laughs> um, but otherwise, great update. Policy committee was fun. Always. <laughs> okay, I think that's it for our committee reports. Uh, thank you, chairs. Um, we now move on to the financial reports. Uh, acceptance of claims audit report, March 20, 2021. Um, be resolved that the Board of Education of the Garrison Union Free School District hereby accepts the claims audit report for March 2021. May I have a motion, please? So moved. Second. Thank you. Do I have any questions or thoughts on the... Um, Claims audit report from board members. Um, okay, I'll jump in here with one quick one. Joe, I did notice that there are some POs that are coming in where the the change one between when the purchase order was placed and the cut and when the check is cut, there was differing amounts. That's what she's alluding to on the claims audit report. Is that correct? I think that's something we've now fixed. And so what she what she's uh, point, pointing out is um, is claims where we had to increase a purchase order in in order to pay uh, pay an invoice, and that um, that does happen if a blanket uh, PO that was created at the uh, beginning of the year doesn't quite cover what what's needed so that these these um are are changes that that do do happen and she is just point pointing them out okay great thank you anyone else have questions on the report okay thank you joe move to a roll call vote please dusty jocelyn apostello okay sorry Aye. Thank you, James. 
Uh, Madeline Julian. Aye. Courtney McCarthy. Aye. Matthew Spicer. Aye. Sarah Tormey. Aye. <clears throat> Next up, we have acceptance of the treasurer's report for March 2021. Uh, be it resolved that the Board of Education of the Garrison Union Free School District hereby accepts the treasurer's report for March 2021. Uh, may I have a motion, please? So moved. Second. Thank you. Do you have any questions for Joe on the treasurer's report, appropriation status report, revenue status report? Okay. Move to a roll call vote, please. Jocelyn Apicello? Aye. James Hoke? Aye. Madeline Julian? Aye. Courtney McCarthy? Aye. Matthew Spicer? Aye. Sarah Tormey? Aye. Thank you. Next up, we have acceptance of minutes. Be it resolved that the Board of Education of the Garrison Union Free School District hereby accept the minutes of the regular meeting of April 7th, 2021. May I have a motion, please? So moved. Mel, I saw you unmuted, but then it didn't come through. Second. Thank you. Okay. Any questions, comments, or thoughts on the minutes? Okay. We move to a roll call vote, please. Jocelyn Apicello. Aye. James Pope. Aye. Madeline Julian. <laughs> Aye. Courtney McCarthy. <laughs> Matthew Spicer. Aye. Sarah Tormey. Aye. <laughs> You're puppy bestie. I couldn't figure out whose dog that was for a minute. Okay. <laughs> oh, the two dogs. Your dog got my dog all upset. <laughs> uh, we'll now move on to the consent agenda. <laughs> um, let's see. Give me just a second here. Be it resolved that the Board of Education of the Garrison Union Free School District, upon the recommendation of Carl L. Albano, superintendent, hereby approves the per personnel consent agenda items as presented. May I have a motion, please? Uh, so moved. Second. Second. <laughs> Don't all unmute at once here. Okay. Um, Carl, would you like to speak to the items on the consent agenda? Sure, Sarah, happy to. Uh, I, I know the board has had some time to review these, but, but let me go through them and, and certainly I'm happy to take any questions. Uh, letter C I'll point out is an extension for our CSE CPSE chairperson, Jen Muller. Um, we are requesting an additional 22 days of her services um, as uh, I think the board knows this is annual review time uh, at the end of a school year, which is the busiest time for special education. However, this year, um, it, being COVID and, and being more complicated than previous years, we have had more meetings ongoing throughout the year. Placements have switched. Um, there was also one particular um, complex uh, placement that, that required a number of meetings. So uh, I am recommending that we increase her um, to do an additional 22 days um, up until June 30th of this year. <clears throat> Next year, we do expect um, it to be more predictable and, and more normal. Um, the second one, uh, letter D, uh, we, we have a cleaner uh, who's replacing uh, um, our cleaner who uh, resigned last month. Yadira Martinez uh, went through um, three interviews. Uh, Michael Twardy led that interview process. Um, we had one of our other um, custodians um, participate, Joe Jimmick and I also met finalist. Uh, Yadira um, comes to us uh, with experience. She worked in the Harrison School District, uh, had great references, and, and we think she'll be a, a really solid addition uh, to the custodial staff. Um, also, um, I'd like to um, recognize that Kevin Keegan, one of our retirees, is uh, coaching uh, or uh, submitted to coach girls softball. So we are very pleased about that. He does a great job coaching uh, and he's certainly familiar with Garrison um, and, and we are familiar with him. So um, working with um, Patrick Beckley, I think they'll do a great job. 
The, video, the videographer, uh, that is something new. Uh, as Sarah mentioned earlier, we're planning to go back to in-person board meetings starting in May. Um, we had a videographer um, that worked with us over a year ago. Um, he did accept some other work. So um, we needed to find someone to cover us uh, for the last two months of the school year. Uh, Cecilia Roars uh, comes um, with strong recommendations. She actually does the, the work at the Haldane School District. Um, so we recommend her to you um, and uh, basically have her stay with us through the end of the year and then we can decide uh, about next year um, at the reorg meeting. Uh, also, uh, letters G and H are related um, as far as the purchasing agent. Uh, in the past, you may recall our previous uh, business administrator was also the business administrator as well as the treasurer. So that uh, required me to be the official purchasing agent for the district as superintendent. Now that we have a new model and we have a treasurer, uh, what this does is it, it appoints uh, Joseph Jimmick as the purchasing agent, and then it appoints me as superintendent as the deputy purchasing agent. In Joe's absence, I would be able to approve purchases, but the, the main person would be Joe Jimmick as our school business administrator, which I think uh, makes a lot more sense. Uh, so those are all of the personnel items. I'm happy to take any questions. Do you have any questions? I just have one for the CSE um, extra days. Those include days to help with our um, review of special education as well. Because I know we have a presentation upcoming on our special education program in general. Yes, and thank you for reminding me. Um, that is the other, um, the other thing that's happening this year is our special education review. We have an outside consultant and Jennifer Muller has been uh, a key part of that. Uh, and we are uh, we have a presentation scheduled, a public presentation uh, at the end of the school year. So yes, Sarah, there'll be Great. a few dedicated to that. Thank you. All right, we don't have any other questions. We'll move on to a roll call vote. Jocelyn Apicello. Aye. James Hope. Aye. Madeline Julian. Aye. Courtney McCarthy. Aye. Matthew Spicer. Aye. Your turn. Aye. Thank you. Okay. That was page six. Next, we are going on to old business. We have a second reading of policy 5661 wellness. Um, I'm going to read the recommended action first. Be resolved that the Board of Education of the Garrison Union Free School District hereby approves policy 5661 wellness as presented. May I have a motion, please? So moved. Second. Thank you. Um, do I have any questions, comments, or follow up thoughts on the wellness policy as presented? Okay. Let's move to a roll call vote and get a wellness policy. John, <laughs> sorry, Jocelyn Avicello. Aye. James Hope. Aye. Madeline Julian. Aye. Courtney McCarthy. Aye. Matthew Spicer. Aye. Your attorney. Aye. I'm so excited about this policy. Thank you all. All right. Um, moving on to new business. Um, CSE CPSE recommendations, be it resolved that the Board of Education of the Garrison Union Free School District approve the Committee on Special Education CSE and the Committee on Preschool Special Education CPSE recommendations and student placements. I don't need to read the numbers, right? Um, Sarah, did you wanna do all of the new business together? Oh, I forgot and I wrote that out too, Dusty, I'm so sorry. Okay guys, take that back. Dusty made this, our lives all simpler, thank you. So um, I do this as be resolved, the Board of Education of the Garrison Union Free School District approve items A through e. e as presented. May I have a motion, please? So moved, thank you, Dusty. <laughs> Second. Going forward, Dusty, you just put that in, then I'll remember to read it. This, as we get this far in, I just start reading the script. 
Um, do I have any questions or comments or thoughts on the new business as presented? Carl, do you have anything you want to add? Sure. I, Madeline, do you, do you have a question? I just wanted to hear more about the trail, the New Jersey Trail Conference. Sure, sure. So um, let me start by, by thanking uh, Jill Lake, who uh, did connect the district with the New York, New Jersey Trail Conference organization. It's a nonprofit organization, and they maintain hundreds of trails uh, in, in our region and, of course, in, in New Jersey. Um, it's, it's a volunteer organization. It's a, a nonprofit organization. And basically, uh, this memorandum of understanding allows them to maintain our trails. Uh, they have people who, if need be, would, would um, monitor the trails. If a tree falls, for example, uh, they are licensed to use chainsaws. They could, could clear the trails and make sure they're, they're safe and, and maintained year round. Uh, there is no cost to the district. Uh, like I said, they're a volunteer organization. Uh, they, they have training and, and they're very reputable. Um, so I think it, it really is a win-win for us. Uh, we had our lawyers at Gervin and Falazzo review it. Um, they also recommended that our insurance company, NICER, uh, review it, um, just in case someone were, were to you know, sustain an injury or something like that. We wanted to make sure the district was covered. Uh, if for any reason, if we're not happy, of course, we, we, um, there's a 60-day um, notification where we could part ways. Um, but I don't really um, see that happening because I, I think this is a real positive uh, because uh, our 181 acres is, is just too much for our six-member facilities team to, to maintain. They have enough uh, with our main school campus. So, so I, I, I think this is a real positive for the district and the community. Oh, do you think this will help set us up for next year when we want to use the forest more? Uh, absolutely. Yeah, they, 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 um, they will also, um, you know, our signage in the forest, for example, <clears throat> they'll point out if there's any, you know, any erosion, any danger. Um, they're also going to make recommendations. We, we don't have to follow up on it, but for expanding the parking areas uh, right now, they, they are limited. Um, it would only be a recommendation and the district would be able to decide whether or not we, we'd like to expand them, but they will give us um, their expertise on how and where uh, that parking could be expanded. So yes, that would be helpful for us uh, bringing students and, and, and transporting them there uh, back and forth safely. Are there any other questions on specifically on the um, memorandum of understanding with the trail conference? Okay, and they will not be advertising our um, trails or publishing maps of our trails, correct? They will not, Sarah, but <clears throat> on their website, um, they do have maps of all the trails, um, public trails in New York and New Jersey. So our, you know, the Garrison School Forest has been on their website. It is public information, but they won't be um, promoting or, or, or advertising. It, it is just there as a, as a reference for people who may want to hike. Thank you. Any other questions on any of the other items? I, I'll just mention, um, Courtney did a great job of summarizing uh, the concussion management policy uh, is an important one. Uh, again, as Courtney said, we have uh, our modified sports beginning next week. So I thank the board for, for um, considering uh, expediting this. Um, <clears throat> it is something that was reviewed by nurse Melissa, by Patrick Beckley, who is our phys ed uh, teacher, as well as our athletic director. <clears throat> and it, there's information for parents. Um, it also will be posted on the website. Uh, it requires our staff, anyone who's involved with uh, interscholastic sports, um, to be trained every two years. Uh, we just verified uh, Coach Beckley has been doing it. He was actually um, trained last year. Uh, but, but it is something that, that I think is important to have in place um, so you can communicate. Uh, concussions are very serious. We, we know a lot more about them. Um, and for parents to have resources. Um, and we've already updated the website with, with more resources for parents um, if, if your child does sustain a concussion. Um, <clears throat> the important, I, probably the most important thing is it clearly spells out before a student can return 
to physical activity, such as phys ed, recess, or sports, you need medical clearance. So I think spelling that out and having that made public is important. And again, thank you for uh, expediting. Any questions on concussions or the policy? Okay, I think we can move to a roll call vote, Dusty. Jocelyn Apostello? Aye. James Hoke? Aye. Madeline Julian? Aye. Courtney McCarthy? Aye. Matthew Spicer? Aye. Sarah Tormey? Aye. Okay, moving on, we are now at public comment. Um, I invite the public to enter their comments um, in the chat and I will read them in order to give you a moment to do that. I will say that public comment is intended for members of the community to speak openly and voice concerns in accordance with policy 3220 of the Garrison Union Free School District. Any person wishing to speak shall comply with all provisions of this policy. Comments about specific uh, comments about school personnel and individual students is a violation of board policy. Um, concerns regarding students or personnel should be discussed privately with the superintendent or appropriate administrator. I'm gonna check now, see if I have any comments. It's quiet this evening. Okay, you can always email as well. And now we move on to board member comment another discussion. And thank you, Matt, for remembering the order. It's greatly appreciated. We begin with Jocelyn this evening. Hi, I just wanted to say, I think some of you probably received from NISBA, there was a, um, there's a webinar coming up. It's a little long, it's like three hours, but it, it, it is your district's civic education program thriving? And I just wanted to to bring it up because I've, I've been hearing, you know, the federal, you know, the federal government is really pushing civics right now. There's bipartisan support. This is following obviously January um, 6, where, you know, people are kind of stepping back and thinking, oh, wow, we really have been pushing a lot of STEM slash STEAM. Uh, whatever happened to rounding it all out with history and civics? And so I just, I, I signed up to go I, and I would love to report on it the next time, you know, whenever we, you know, whenever it's following in a meeting, just to let you know um, what they're talking about. But I do, it, it definitely was, it was interesting to me to, to I, I hadn't really thought about it. I've always, always for pushing STEM and STEAM. I mean, I'm an engineer, um, but I was like, oh yeah, we should really be also doing that other side of things, which you saw in the presentation with Costa, um, you know, that that was one of the things that was, you know, was on the list was the idea of civics and community engagement. It didn't win, didn't, didn't win the vote, but um, there are a lot of people who care about it. So I'll be very happy to report on it um, after I give up three whole hours for another webinar. Thank you, Jocelyn. And that one is free. So the more the merrier on that one. Uh, we can afford it. <laughs> uh, Okay, moving on, um, James. Um, I don't really have any comment uh, other than I think that, you know, I think the Costa, pro the process with uh, Jonathan and the, and the strategic plan is, is, like I said, I think, I think I might've been cut off, but it, it's really at the beginning stage. It's not an end product here. This is sort of the initial sal uh, salvo that, starts a whole, um, a whole process of trying to uh, make concrete that which is fairly abstract. And that's really where it, it gets interesting. So um, th I wanna thank everyone for being involved in that. I also wanna see Courtney's puppy, but I don't think we're gonna get a view on the puppy, are we? No. Ex how about exec session? Exec session, I think it, the thing <clears throat> new members of the family ought to be shown in public session, I think, but okay, we'll, we'll, we'll settle for the, the cute puppy exec. All right. Thank you, James. Madeline, you're up next. No comment. Okay. Um, Courtney. No comment this evening. Thanks. Matt. Just want to echo. Carl's comment from before and double down on my comment from our last public meeting, um, just to take up the offer of, of testing, if you have any reason to at all, and 
especially remain aware as a community that we have a whole community here uh, that we're all taking care of of 100% unvaccinated folks in our in terms of our students. So keep that in mind as the good news on vaccination keeps going up for all of our adults. Thanks, everybody. Um, I do have a comment this evening. I want to thank um, all the members of, and I probably should have done this after the committee reports, but to the chairs of the committee uh, and the members who are participating, um, I really appreciate the time and effort you've put in so far this year. I know we're not quite to the end, but we're really seeing how well the process works um, by having those committees work together and the leadership. So. Um, thank you so much to all the other board members for the time and energy and I and especially I'm thinking a lot about the facilities committee right now and the effort that has gone into this capital project and we haven't broken ground um, and the expertise so thank you Madeline especially for lending your professional expertise to this um, it's greatly appreciated and tonight we saw what the planning committee has been working on for so long there's a lot of hours that went into that um, so I really appreciate James, how you put the structure together last year. And I think we're starting to see the fruition of it. So good work, everyone. Um, on that note, I would like to move us to executive session pending board approval. Be it resolved that the Board of Education of the Garrison Union Free School District hereby enters into executive session for the purpose of discussing the employment history of a particular person. May I have a motion, please? I'll move. Second. Second. Thank you. All right, everyone. Dusty, thank you for your time this evening. I'll give you an end time. A car will. We have to vote. Have to vote. Oh. oh, sorry. I'm rushing. All right, Dusty, you want to the roll? <laughs> Jocelyn Apicello. Aye. James Hope. Aye. Madeline Julian. Aye. Courtney McCarthy. Aye. Matthew Spicer. Aye. Sarah Tormy. Aye. And we will adjourn without taking further action. Thank you, Joe. I appreciate your time as well. I'll see you all soon. <laughs> Good night.